Welcome to episode number four of Swift by Sandel Swift Clips, a series of shorter videos showing different Swift techniques. On this episode, we'll take a look at a few different ways to manage URLs and server endpoints within an app, for example, an iOS or Mac app. Now, when getting started with a project, it's quite common to simply construct all URLs inline right where they're being used. So for example, here we're constructing a URL for loading an article using Foundation's URL session API. While this approach might work just fine within smaller apps or apps that don't need to perform a lot of networking, it often leads to URLs being scattered across many different types and all over a code base. So let's take a look at three different ways to address this problem and to make the way we manage our URLs a bit more organized. One quite simple way would be to extend the URL type with static computer properties and factory methods for each of our endpoints. That way, we could gather all of our URLs within either a single file or group them together based on what part of the app that they're for. And the cool thing is that even though this is quite a simple approach, it'll still give us much nicer call sites. Since we can now construct our URLs by calling our new endpoint properties and methods using this really nice dot syntax. However, if we go back to our URL extension, we're still repeating the same base URL over and over again within each of our endpoint APIs, which isn't very nice and quite error prone, since the more we have to repeat something, the higher the chances are that we'll end up making a mistake somewhere. One way to solve that problem would be to create a private utility method that lets us create a URL for a given endpoint. With that in place, we can now simply call make endpoint within each of our properties and methods, which is much nicer. Next, let's take a look at a different way of managing an app's URLs and endpoints, which is to use a dedicated endpoint type. In this case, we've defined such a type as an enum, which we'll then add cases to for each of our app's endpoints. For example, one for recommendations, one for loading an article with a given ID, and one for performing searches. One cool thing is that we can also support optional endpoint parameters by using default values, which is something that was added for enums in Swift 5.1. Since we've now defined our endpoints using a separate type, we'll also need a way to convert instances of that type into URLs, since we won't be able to pass endpoint values directly to URL session. One way to do that would be to implement a computer property that switches on self and then uses our make endpoint method from before to return the correct URL for each endpoint. Now, if we go back to our networking code from before and implement our new endpoint enum, we'll first have to create an instance of it, and then we have to convert it into a URL when calling URL session, like this. While having a dedicated endpoint type is really great, it's a bit unfortunate that we can no longer use that nice dot syntax that we could use before when implementing everything using URL directly, and that we now always have to manually convert each endpoint into a URL. So let's fix that by extending URL session with a convenience API that lets us pass an endpoint directly when performing a request. We'll also auto start each data task that we create while still returning it as well. And we'll mark our new method with a discardable result attribute so that handling that return task becomes completely optional. Now, we could have also taken this opportunity to convert this URL session API into something a little bit nicer, for example, using a result type instead of all those optionals. But that's kind of out of scope for this exercise. So let's leave things like this for now. With that done, if we now go back to our networking code, we can see that we can now make it so much nicer to read with a clear, concise syntax, complete type safety, and we also got rid of that boilerplate required to manually resume the data task as well. Very nice. However, there is one quite major issue with this approach. If we think about it, the endpoint type that we just declared needs to contain all of the endpoints that our app will ever call, which in turn requires it to know about all sorts of different models that we use throughout our app. Now, having these strongly coupled types is architecturally usually something that is good to avoid, but in practice it might not be a problem as long as all of these types are declared within the same module. But, especially with networking, chances are quite high that we want to move that code out from our main app target. For example, to be able to reuse that code across multiple apps or between an app and an extension by creating a separate networking library. And if we do that, our endpoint type and our models won't be in the same module anymore, which will be quite problematic. 
So let's explore a third and final way to manage URLs that is a bit of a twist on this enum-based approach, and that's to use a struct instead. In this case, we're going to keep the type name endpoint and give our struct two properties, a path and an array of query items. That will enable us to construct the URLs corresponding to our endpoints in a much more robust way by using URL components. URL components is sort of like a builder for URLs, and by again implementing a computed property that returns a URL for a given endpoint, we can build up our URL by assigning the endpoint's path and query items, along with our scheme and host to URL components. We'll then also take the opportunity to improve the error message we'll get for any invalid URLs by using a precondition instead of just force unwrapping that optional. Finally, let's write the same sort of static factory methods and properties that we originally extended URL with, but now on our new endpoint type instead. That'll enable us to use the same dot syntax as we were using before, and we can still declare all of our main endpoints in a single file if we wish to do so, but we're now also free to declare our actual endpoints away from the declaration of our endpoint type itself, which lets us move that declaration to our networking library while still keeping this extension within our main app code, creating a much more decoupled system and giving us much more flexibility. So the three ways of managing URLs and endpoints that we've covered in this video are, first, by extending URL with static factory methods and computer properties, we also took a look at using an endpoint enum with cases for each endpoint that our app is calling. And finally, to define our endpoint type as a struct, which can then be extended with factory methods and computed properties. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, feel free to share it with a friend or subscribe to this channel on YouTube. You can find all of the sample code from this video at swiftbysundell.com slash clips slash four. Thanks so much for watching.